Gobi, Han Hai, or Gebi. All these words are the names of the Gobi Desert in different languages. The Gobi is one of the oldest deserts in the world. Its surface area is an incredible 1.3 million square kilometers. The Gobi Desert remains largely unexplored due to its immense size. It stretches between the Altai mountain range in the north, the Tibetan Plateau in the southwest, and the Great Wall of China in the southeast. Its extreme size goes hand in hand with extreme temperature differences. In the winter, the temperature can drop as low as minus 40 degrees Fahrenheit, while in the summertime, the temperature can climb up to 113 degrees Fahrenheit. Only a few living beings survive such drastic temperature differences. One of the adventurers that got carried away by the magic of the Gobi Desert was Sven Hedin, a Swedish discoverer. He described his caravan as follows. Our camp with its many packages and animals made a very picturesque appearance, and it gave me a feeling of deep satisfaction to think that all those things were mine. It can be stated with confidence that not much has changed since in the Gobi Desert. Five ecoregions are found in the Gobi, each of which has an entirely different soil composition. Each year, the desert claims several extra kilometers. The southern reaches of the Gobi have been devouring pastures on the Chinese border for the last 20 years. Each year, the greedy masses of sand absorb 20 centimeters of rainfall. That's not a lot of rainfall, but people and animals can adapt to even the harshest of conditions. In search of better pastures, the Mongolians migrate up to four times a year. Their entire household, complete with yurt, travels along with them. The art of assembling and disassembling the yurt has been perfected over the millennia. It is just another facet of the nomadic lifestyle. The yurt is constructed to withstand bitterly cold weather. Four people are required to assemble it. A trap is stretched over the wooden framework and then it's lined with hides and other firm materials for making the yurt waterproof during periods of rain and as insulation during cold nights. The resulting area that they live in is not particularly large, but it serves these nomads very well. The complete erection process of the yurt takes just a few hours. It's perfectly eco-friendly. When the Mongols depart in search of greener pastures, no trace of their habitation is left behind. Recently, the yurts have become increasingly more popular with the environmentally conscious living in both Europe and the United States. The women are in charge of the interior decorations. They incorporate many colorful rugs and other decorative items throughout. These nomadic herdsmen know the Gobi Desert inside out, especially its inhospitable, but more appealing southern part. It is found in the middle of a national park. The peaks of the Gurvan Saikan Ul mountain range seem to blast skyward. When translated, its name means the three beauties, even though the dark and rocky mountains feel quite gloomy in real life. The base camp for the expeditions into the mountains is equipped with yurts and herds of the load-bearing Bactrian camel. A sought-out sandy desert, the Kongorian Els, or Singing Sands, lies at the foot of the mountain. The dunes rise 300 meters high, 12 kilometers wide, and 100 kilometers long. Under the watchful eye of the three beauties, they seem to be the guardian of secrets. It is said that directly beneath the surface of this sandy kingdom lives the mythical worm Olgoi Chorchoi. The worm is said to attack humans from behind and suck out all their blood. The many animal skeletons found in the desert are more likely manifestations of severe heat or drought, and not so much the Olgoi Chorchoi. The desert is known to be unmerciful to lost animals and people. The giant worm story could easily have started with the ramblings of a delirious lost soul. Several historical records 
and even some cryptozoological enthusiasts actually mention the existence of the Algoi Chorchoi. But predominantly, this creature is only alive in the minds of the local people and their shamans. It is supposedly bright red in color, spits acid, and its sighting foretells approaching death. The legend may have originated as a warning to the foolish of the desert's impending dangers. But there are those who interpret and use archaeological findings from the Gobi to point to evidence of the monster. A dinosaur egg and the remains of the first mammals, dating back to the Jurassic period, 164 million years ago, were discovered in the northern part of the desert. The Mongolians claim that once you know where to look, you can find a piece of prehistory in less than 30 minutes. The multicolored sand grains vary in weight. The wind carries the lightest layer, which is why the singing sands appear to change shape constantly. It appears that the three sisters and the singing desert only know how to take lives. On the other hand, the Gobi Desert is a place that can give life as well as take it. The rarely seen and highly endangered Przalski's horse can be spotted on the desert's periphery. Zoologists are slowly reintroducing this breed from zoos back into the wild. We can take off to the Yolin Am Pass in pursuit of unusual and varied life forms. It is here that we find myriad glacier-fed streams. In the winter, the pass is covered by a layer of ice several meters thick and many kilometers long. Due to the surrounding mountain walls, the pass remains shaded and so the ice thaws gradually. The last bits disappear sometime in September, shortly before the onset of another winter. Only a few years back, the ice remained year-round, but now the relatively warmer summers of the last decade have brought an end to that. A slightly more acceptable climate due to higher altitude results in a greater variance of fauna and flora thriving here. The accessibility of water also helps. This is where the snow leopard lives, but he's rarely spotted. <laughs> 